quite unlike the style of a series which almost became folklore around Australia for Shell in 1975. Franklin and Brewster charmed their way round the countryside, delivering a message about how well patrons would be treated at a Shell service station. Not always like the treatment they received. Two beers, thanks, mate. No beer. Number ten, Essex. Couple of lemonades. No lemonade. Gay director T. Storm. The fridge is on the blink. Slim Dutch coins. Number four. Overexposed. Well, uh, number six. Can we get a feed then? Cook's got the mumps. Maybe we ought to go into the hotel business. Yeah. On the Gold Coast. With all those society chicks in their bikinis. Bikinis? Yeah, well, at least the gas station's open. Good night. Now, don't tell us. More than anything, the series was a change of pace for John Morton, who played Brewster. No problem. He normally works as a film electrician, but someone decided he had the right look for the part. So he moved out from behind the camera for the duration of the series. Why don't you come inside and have a cold drink while I fix the car? You've won me. There was even some talk of Franklin and Brewster becoming the basis of a television series. Brewster, I reckon we can give the Gold Coast a miss. The same applied to a campaign run for statewide building society in Victoria, a concept of campaign palace writer John Turnbull. The brief was to make bank check accounts look very old-fashioned, the ones that didn't pay interest, and statewide had a brand, brand new one, so it was a question of setting one against the other. Bank charges. Get lost. <laughs> Read that back, please, Jim. The, the dialogue thing popped up using a boxing um, secretary. I guess it was my own sort of... Um, wouldn't it be nice to really tell the bank manager what he could do with his account? Thank you for everything. Yours most sincerely. That's telling him. Statewide intercheck. A merger between building societies cut short the relationship in its prime. We were only making one commercial, but the characters turned out to be so popular that by almost by popular demand, we then had to make more and more and more. Hello? It's the bank manager. Tell him to go and jump in the lake. I'm sorry, he's in a meeting. Mostly once you've got two characters, uh, it's very easy to write for them. It's creating the characters that's the problem. But viewers love the comic soapy atmosphere of Sweet Jane's newfound worldliness and the crusty but fast-mellowing boss. Yes, I just bought a house. How can you buy a house? You're my secretary. I just popped into the Statewide Building Society and got a statewide home loan. But you're a woman. You noticed. You're not even married. Hmm? I'll just put on a new family room. But you haven't got a family. I know. Jane. How close to you is the writer get to something like that? I mean, were you saddened when it stopped? for example? Yes, although the pressure of, of still trying to keep them fresh and make each one as good as the last, that certainly uh, was, a, was a sweat. Will you marry me? I think I'll book you some swimming lessons. I guess I'd have liked to go the one more where they did get married. That would be nice to, to, to round the whole thing off. Loves me not, she loves me a bit. The unmarried boss and Jane were one of the most memorable advertising couples since this very married pair. George, I'm hungry again. When she wanted a caramello, he had to go out and get it. Well, you could try that all night place. The one you got the spaghetti omelette from? Why didn't I think of that? It never made it as a top ten campaign, but the public loved her hidden excesses. Well, how could I tell him I wanted two? Sometimes it just has to be caramello. George put up with a lot to help sell Caramello in the 70s, so apparently it takes more than a stoic leading man to gain industry recognition. Tonight we'll be showing you the top 10 commercials as chosen by creative directors from Australia's top agencies. They were asked to nominate the best and most effective commercials or commercial campaigns from more than 30 years of Australian television and list them in a top 10 order. Cigarette ads were excluded because the law prohibits us from showing them. Otherwise, Paul Hogan's Winfield campaign would have made it to about number three position. It was an automatic choice in the all-time favourites, just like the campaign which came tenth. Go, 
It seems as though things have been going better with Coke for nearly as long as we've had television. Coca-Cola, Coca-Cola, things go better with Coca-Cola, things go better with Coke. Refresh yourself, enjoy yourself, be really refreshed with Coke. Refresh yourself, enjoy yourself, there's real refreshment in Coke. On the beach and in the sun, the real thing is so much fun. For the times of your life and the things that you do, Coke is right there with you. Coke is it. You get more Coca-Cola for your money in the big, big family side. Give them good and give them plenty. Spread it round and don't spare any. It's Medellin and you know it's doing good. Number nine, Meadow Lee, was one of the commercials which established a contemporary Australian jingle sound. You ought to be congratulated. Which came 10th and 9th on the list of Oz TV's greatest commercials, Coke and Meadow Lee, was selected by most creative directors. But there may be a few surprises in the others, considering what hasn't made it into the list of favourites. For example, some that were just outside the top 10 included. I'm the chance who's gonna dance with the dancer. Fancy Nancy, so romantic. Clasp the grass, tell her our love will last. We'll jump on Mary the Berry's blue canary. Go along with a way to Tipperary. Tell the band to make some banter. Fancy Nancy was one of John Farnham's early forays into advertising. His first was in 1967, before the advent of Sadie. The woman in his life then was Susan Jones. The song actually made it to number seven on the hit parade, and he sang it during his first television appearance. When showbiz names decided to sing out It's Time for Gough Whitlam in 1972, it was also the first time such a large group had been so upfront politically in Australia. The performance given by Robert Morley to endear Mr. Heinz to us was far more down to earth. <laughs> Mr. Heinz, this is your idea of a joke. Kindly keep your corn in the can. It was cans of soft drink Big M had in its sights in 1976. Milk will never be the same now the Big M's here. There's a big strawberry M, big strawberry M. Monday, Saturday, Sunday, get your chin off the ground. Although never really a challenger to the Big Ten, Big M ranked with creative directors on roughly a par with the AeroGuard campaign, which repopularized the classic Aussie Friday night pleasantry. Hey, Charger. A few years earlier, Chrysler cleverly introduced two words to the language. Hey, Charger! Hey, Charger! Hey, Charger! Hey, Charger! The unbelievable can happen to you. If you're looking in from the outside After 
after a deceptively poignant beginning, Suzanne has stayed on the periphery of OzTV's top 10 commercials with a jingle that leaves no room for uncertain shoppers. At the other end of the popularity spectrum, 1988 saw the demise of the Dynamo Man. Like that. We suffered him for years as he pelted people with food and dye, but bought Dynamo by the megalitre. We'll show you what Dynamo can do in the wash. According to Dynamo's manufacturers, that character set it up as the top-selling liquid laundry detergent in Australia. As the ad men say, whether a commercial is loved or hated, it must be noticed to be effective. And in turn, it's better to be hated than ignored. It's a ploy agencies often use to get a product started in the marketplace. We've realised that since at least 1976, when an agency here adapted Mrs Marsh from TV screens in the United States. She was set up as a severe-looking disciplinarian, but in the latest offerings, has been intentionally mellowed. Fluoride in Colgate certainly strengthens teeth, gets right into teeth, like this liquid gets into chalk. Being rated one of the most irritating commercials isn't detrimental to sales. Mrs Marsh helps Colgate hold 50% of the market. Can I see any decay here, Mrs Marsh? Rita the Eater Eater has built a market share from 0.5 to 12%. She started her commercial life eight years ago on a supermarket checkout. Despite a regular place in the most irritating commercials, Rita is loved by kids and seen by women as a good-hearted mum. The marriage of the right character to the right commercial is vital. A big M girl could no more sell Colgate toothpaste than Mrs Marsh could sell decor. Eater 5 star, great taste, great value! In turn, creating people to create and the characters in the commercials is probably terrific. a bigger problem. Whatever talent, talent it picks up along the way, a commercial is usually really only as good as its writer. So the industry really started careful, its own so copywriter's school. Here, John Turnbull changes hats and becomes a teacher for a group of hopefuls well, chosen from outside the industry. We've a new plane, so what do we claim? Like any teacher, he introduces sidelights to the main theme. Except that in the case of writing for commercials, they tend to show the fun of putting revised soundtracks over existing commercials, showing the value of an ad's components. What do they think of our food and drink? For the hopefuls, it's a bit like Christmas. In from the cold to the conference room of Melbourne's Campaign Palace, one of Australia's top agencies. It's a bit like eager young actors landing an audition for a hot soapy. Apart from the message coming from the screen and from Turnbull, lauding the delights of the advertising industry, the fledgling copywriters are in a room painted completely black, where the focus is on a series of advertising posters. It seems to reinforce their wish to follow in John Turnbull's footsteps. Turnbull is regarded by his peers as one of Australia's top copywriters. I'm fond of saying to them, you can teach the skills, but you can't teach the spark. If we've got people in the school who, who can't think, who can't imagine, then all the help in the world isn't going to, uh, isn't going to help them. Being a copywriter is, is a touch more than that. You've got to come up with the ideas themselves. And it's assumed you can come up with ideas, then the body copy will look after itself. Not everything will look after itself when these students are called upon to write about various products. But they seem to have learnt the value of product testing but it's a very good idea just to know the sort of formulas of writing sentences, the formulas of ideas 